Today, I'm going to be talking about my experience with primary mathematics, and I will be giving you a flip through of books 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B. is a math curriculum also known as Singapore math. There are several different editions and versions, but the one that I use is called Standards Edition. There is also a Common Core Edition if that's something that you are interested in. Primary Mathematics is the math curriculum that they use in Singapore, which has led to Singapore being at the top of international math tests. It uses the CPA progression, which stands for Concrete, Pictorial, and Abstract. This means that it explicitly demonstrates how to do math problems to a child and then eventually transfers into the child being able to do math problems on their own, even just in their own head, without the use of manipulatives or other tools. Primary mathematics uses a combination of supervised lessons and also independent work so that students can really get a grasp of the different math concepts it is introducing. Okay, that was a lot of words, I know, and quite frankly, a lot of that information came straight from their website. Some of you might have found that kind of information informative, but I am now going to explain my specific experience with this curriculum, in non-mathematical terms, of course. Stacy recommended this math curriculum to me a couple of years ago when my oldest daughter started officially homeschooling. You can check out Stacy's review of primary mathematics from last year by clicking the card above. Previous to primary mathematics, we actually used a free math curriculum that's available online called MEP or Math Enhancement Program. I actually found the transition from MEP to primary mathematics really smooth because there's a lot of similarities. So now my second grader is in level 2A and my kindergartner is in level 1A. I'm always looking for curriculum that is open and go and also comprehensive. And I also knew that math might be a struggle for me to teach because I just never found a joy in numbers or math concepts when I was learning math skills. So thank goodness for primary mathematics. Because this curriculum is so great, it's actually the easiest subject for me to teach. I just use the textbook and the workbooks for each level, but I know there are teacher's guides and home instructor's guides available for purchase as well. So the textbooks and workbooks that I have are all listed for roughly under $20 each on their website. So that's a pretty good price, it's very affordable, and you might even be able to find a better price elsewhere, you never know. There are lessons to teach directly from the textbook, and these textbooks are not typically written in, so these textbooks can actually be reused for each of your children. Once you complete a lesson in the textbook, then it assigns pages that correspond to that lesson to do in the workbook. So it's really easy to use, and I personally have never felt a need to invest in a teacher's guide of any kind. With primary mathematics, it actually might be really really handy for you to keep manipulatives on hand. So you can use anything. You could use pennies, you could use Cheerios, anything. And what I like about primary mathematics is it doesn't come with all of these manipulatives sold in a package together because there is no way in my house with the lack of storage we have to be able to store all of that. To add on to that, primary mathematics books are actually really small and not very intimidating. So, I mean, look how thin they are. And so they don't feel intimidating or very heavy. And also they're easy to take on the go if you're gonna be homeschooling on a trip or a road trip or anything like that. And here's a hot take. I actually don't really use the textbook very often. I feel like the workbook really progresses slowly enough that a child can pick up on the concepts that primary mathematics is teaching without the use of the textbook. And I also feel like sometimes when I have used the textbook and then gone to the workbook exercises, it just felt really repetitive and like almost too much. So I've just simplified things by mostly sticking to the workbooks. I do encourage you to purchase both the textbook and the workbook, but just know that you don't necessarily have to go page by page in the textbook textbook to make the workbook exercises make sense. Unless that's something that you just feel more comfortable doing by following the textbook and the workbook pages in tandem with each other. You will notice that sometimes there are exercises in the workbook that can last like several pages, but really you should feel comfortable breaking that up however you see fit. For example, we usually do only one or two pages per day, depending on how difficult the lesson is or how many problems are on a page. And there are some sections of the curriculum where it's just review, so we can kind of fly through those a little quicker. But for the most part, just one or two pages a day does the trick for us. Okay, well, I think it's time to do a flip through, so let's check it out. All right.
Here is level 1A of primary mathematics. This is the textbook. For all of these, I'm basically just going to be showing the textbooks because these are probably the most helpful to determine what level your child is at. So I like to show people the table of contents because this is what shows you what will be taught in this level. So your child might need this level or they might be ready to move on to a different one if you've used another math curriculum already. So here are just some examples of some of the exercises in the textbook and the workbook looks super similar. That's why I just don't find it necessary to really do both um, or show you both. And like even here, my daughter kind of practiced in here um, just because she was still practicing her writing. So she decided to do this. So that is just an example of the kinds of lessons in level 1A. Here is level 1B. So my oldest daughter actually just finished this one. Here is the table of contents for 1B. It just basically goes into actually some multiplication, division, and then bigger numbers. And then I also really enjoyed the money and time section. So just more examples of the kinds of exercises in here. Lots of illustrations, just very slow progression for each math concept. So feel free to pause if you need to look at something for slightly longer, but I mean, that's just an idea of what you can expect from level 1B. Here is level 2A. So I actually have a bookmark in here because we're currently working through this book. We just started it. So let's look at this table of contents. Basically adding on to what they have learned in books 1A and 1B. So here are some more examples of what you do in here. See, it gets a little bit more wordy, a little bit less of the colorful illustrations because, I mean, this is meant for older kids. So, and also it's kind of nice because it, it goes back to previous concepts, but just a little bit harder so that it can reinforce those concepts. So I'm just kind of flipping through at random just so you can see more word problem type things in here. Assuming that your child can read at least semi-independently at this point, that would be a really good skill to have in order to move on to either of the level two books. So that is level 2A. And finally, here is level 2B. So let's look at these table of contents. And I actually haven't even gotten to this book with either of my kids yet, so I'm actually really excited to look through this with you. <laughs> um, bigger numbers. And um, with all these books, the first couple chapters, or at least the first few exercises, are really just review. So I'm going to skip past some of that to get more into the nitty gritty of the curriculum. And see here, this is what I was talking about where it says exercise 10, pages 79 through 80. So once you complete this section of the textbook, this is where it tells you where to move on to. Fractions are new in this book. More time. So building upon those previous concepts taught. And then there's a bunch of review. So there you have it. That is just a sample of what you could expect in level 2B. There you have it. That is my experience with the primary mathematics curriculum. It's simple to use, it's affordable, it's really open and go, and I recommend it to basically everyone I know. Math is the one subject that I really haven't flip-flopped on at all in my curriculum choice because primary mathematics is just such a no-brainer for me. It fits into so many different homeschool methods, even mine of Charlotte Mason, so this might just be the perfect math curriculum for you. When searching for math curriculum, what are you looking for in a math curriculum? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos and curriculum reviews just like this one. See you next time.